Welcome back, everybody. We're out back with Dave, the garden guy, in our garden, talking about what you should be doing right now with it. And it's chilly outside. It right is. Now. You know what? I'm going to give you a nickname from now on. The oh, Brew no. Master. I went over to Ryan's <laughs> house yesterday. This guy brews pretty good beer, actually. You know, I had a taste of it. So, uh, He's congratulations. Being too kind. Well, no, I'm not. It was really good. But let's <laughs> talk about gardening a little bit. First off, let's talk about what you should be watering right now. Right. And, you know, the way you water, in fact, you can hear it going I, back there. <laughs> going over there, we'll get a little bit of a close-up. That's about how slow you need to be watering around your plant material. Reason being is we're watering most everything out here about every 30 days. I said 30 days. Wow. That includes your citrus trees, all your pomegranates, apples, peaches, pears, plums, everything else. The reason being is because we want deep and frequent watering. Our clay-type soils, which most of us have, really don't require that much water because we really hold the water in around the plant material. When you're watering, we always say to water about three foot deep. Now the way to do this, if you can push a piece of rebar into the soil after you water at least three foot deep, you've watered deeply enough. Now this is obviously going to change. We're at our coolest time period right now mm -hmm. in Arizona that you could ever be. So right now is really our lowest watering needs. Later on, they're gonna pick up and we normally go up to about every two weeks later on in the spring and about once a week later on in the summer. So every 30 days right Every now. 30 days about right now. But so you should have it on? Very slow. We kind of talked okay. about this with your carob tree yesterday. He had a carob tree that looked a little distressed. Oh, that's about <laughs> what you want. <laughs> now let's go over here and let's talk a little bit about the different types of herbs are grown in the garden. One of them is nasturtium. This is something that works out fantastic, and it does a great job on protecting our plant material from a lot of insect activity. The insects have a tendency to vector into this, so we just destroy it afterwards. Right now is the time to start thinking about planting this stuff, and you can plant it from seed. It comes up edible leaves. You can go ahead and try it. Very uh, kind of a, well, kind of a spicy tasting leaf. A lot of people will go ahead and use it in their salads and some of the other mm. places. We've got a companion planted right in among some of our eggplant right there. And you can see our eggplant. We're going to go ahead and transplant that guy later on. We're kind of keeping him protected from any type of frost that we could get in the next three to four weeks. But it's not, it's not mm. looking very good. Okay. So looks like one of the few winters we're going to get that's real warm. Cilantro is another one that works out fantastic right now. Grow some seed. We use it as a succession crop. We usually plant two or three crops of this. Here's another one. This is called Indian curry. And you can actually grow this in the garden. I don't know if you can smell that, but it has a curry type smell. Tall curry is another name for it. And it kind of pushes off during the slightly. winter. But yeah, you can hear it, smell it slightly. But it is very fragrant later, later on in the spring. Of course, lavender is another one. And lavender does very good in pots or well-drained soil. You can see it right here. We use it all for types of teas or for sleeping in type deuce. And people actually put it underneath their, their pillows before they're going to go to sleep. But boy, does it smell good. It does need that well-drained soil. So keep in mind, when you're growing this guy, if you put it in a hole, you want to make sure that hole drains. If you fill it up with water, which you have to do, it needs to drain within three to four hours. If it doesn't, you need to switch locations. So it's crucial you think about that. Now, come on over here. We're going and planting our last crops right now of our different types of peas and mustard and radish and turnips, cilantro, what we just talked about. You can go ahead and put another crop of collards, lettuce, and spinach in. All those need to go in right now because we still have this fairly cool weather. It's going to warm up pretty fast here, and by February or so, it's going to be one of those times when we're going to switch over to our summer-type vegetables. If you find, you said this is cilantro, right? Cilantro. If you Excellent. find cilantro at the, at the store already mm -hmm. looking like this, should you transplant it now or should you wait? No, you go ahead and transplant it right now. Now, I like to grow this from seed, and I will let these guys bolt. And then you're going to add maybe what that means. Right. For folks out there, what we do, and this is a basil plant right here, and you can see this. This is bolted. This is basically what's happened is producing a lot of seeds. Cilantro will do the same thing. What we do is we allow those seeds to just fall on the ground, and you'll find this cilantro growing throughout our garden out here at Channel 3. The reason being is because we do allow them to bolt, and you can go ahead and allow them to just kind of, well, re produce or perpetual garden themselves. So if you do find in the store already growing like this at say some of your home centers mm -hmm. or some of your garden centers, put it in the ground. I like to grow up from seed and you can still get it to germinate right now. But boy, there's nothing like cilantro and fresh cilantro in those salsas out there. Right. Now come on over here. Oh do we have any more time? Uh, actually we're gonna have Oh to we're come out back. of time. Okay, there yeah, we go. That's all right.